Well, it's one of Washington's worst kept secrets. In order to get just about anything done by our elected lawmakers, there must often be powerful special interests fighting for it. Christine Frazow takes us inside the world of lobbying. In and out, and sometimes back in again. That revolving door that is Washington, in which members of government take jobs as lobbyists, is epitomized on K Street, just a few blocks from the White House, where experience and powerful connections equal access. It was a lifestyle Jack Abramoff knew well. He was one of the most successful and wealthy lobbyists in Washington, before he was charged with tax evasion and taking advantage of Indian tribes, which landed him three and a half years in prison. Yeah, I was inside doing it. I had some, in some cases, I was at the tip of the spear of this thing. Now he's one of the most outspoken critics of the system, which he says undermines democracy. The people are having impact on legislation, and indeed the people who are writing a lot of the legislation are not the elected officials or the staff paid by the country, but rather people paid by special interests. It turns out to be one of the most bipartisan issues in Washington. Here's a list of top administration officials under President Barack Obama who have been through the revolving door. They include Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack, Attorney General Eric Holder, former Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, and under President George W. Bush. They include Attorney General John Ashcroft, the EPA's Christine Todd Whitman, and Mark Warren with the Department of Treasury. You have former clients and you have former colleagues that were in the lobbying world, and suddenly the guy that they used to meet at the water cooler is now the Secretary of Agriculture or the Secretary of Energy, the key person they need. Let's not forget, though, that direct line between K Street and Congress or the White House is constitutionally protected. The right to petition the government for a redress of grievances has simply taken on the form of multi-million dollar firms that do the petitioning for you. Do you think we'll see a change? Well, the changes we've seen in the last 40 years are to make it more polite looking. Um, you know, in the old days, a senator such as Lyndon Johnson would have a shoebox on their desk and you'd have to put cash in there to get favors from them. Those favors now are traded here and later end up here where that government of the people, by the people. The motion to concur in the Senate amendment is adopted. And for the people seems to work best for those who pass through revolving doors.